What's going on, guys? Today, we are going to be going through your guys' bold predictions for the NFL season, which was also your contest entry as well into the NFL jersey giveaway. So got decent amount of comments here. I thought we could make a fun little video about it. See what you guys are thinking is going to happen in this NFL season. I know some of my thoughts that I have and be curious to see if the bold predictions that you guys say here do end up coming to fruition. And then after we do go through all your guys' predictions, have a little football talk. Nothing like some football talk, man. I'm always up to talk some football. I know that you guys are too. But after we go through your guys' predictions, then at the end of this video, I will spin the wheel of truth. And I will see who is going to be our lucky winner of an NFL jersey for our 1,000 subscriber contest. So super excited here, guys. Let's have a little bit of fun. And at the end of the day, get to give somebody a brand new NFL jersey. So kicking things off here with Mr. R. Jesus 111. He says, Giants will end up making the wild card this year, despite not looking great. I know I said to give me a bold prediction, and this is, I would say this is a bold prediction. I predict the Giants will finish 6-11. and 11. Now, that's just me. Obviously, it's the NFL. Anything can happen. They're currently 1-3. And the first game of the season, week one against the Vikings, they did not look good at all, specifically Daniel Jones. Now, they've started to kind of put it together-ish. You know, these last couple of weeks, Daniel Jones not looking as bad. Malik Neighbors looks good, uh, but he's going to be out week five against the Seahawks. So that is really Daniel Jones's biggest weapon. Um, so not having him is going to be a tough one. But yeah, I predict the Giants will go 6-11. and 11. They got to, you know, always tough playing against the Cowboys and the Eagles, who coincidentally aren't doing good to start out. But it's a long season, 17 games. So anything will happen. So bold, bold uh, prediction there, R. Jesus. Next up, we got Pickles Cover here, who says Vikings will make the playoffs with Sam Darnold and they will be a top 10 team. The Vikings are arguably the best team in football. And as a Packers fan, that literally kills me to say that. I don't think anybody expected the Vikings to be in the position that they're at here going into week five. And I think that J.J. McCarthy is literally like the sweating Jordan Peele meme on the sideline. Because, I mean, how do you how do you go away from Sam Darnold, right? If he's playing like this, he's playing at an MVP caliber level. Um, so unless, you know... The Vikings have a massive fall off. I would definitely, I mean, top 10. Yeah, I would say they're one or two right now. You got to figure. So I would definitely think that the Vikings will finish this season top 10 in the league. Moving on down here, we got wild card 9892. And he says the Bucks are winning the NFC this year. I think they very well could win the NFC South, although they just lost a shootout Thursday night football against the Falcons. What a game that was. But I could easily see them winning the NFC South. Don't know about the entire NFC. I mean, Baker's playing elite football. And if you think about it, we just talked about Sam Darnold. And now we're talking about Baker Mayfield. If you would have told me several years ago that Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold were going to be two of the top quarterbacks in the league at one point, I would have told you to put the pipe down and go seek some help. But they are. And they actually played together uh, in Carolina, which is kind of funny. Came out of that same draft class as well. But Baker's playing great football. Uh, Mike Evans is doing what Mike Evans does. The defense is dead last in yards allowed, though. Uh, they got to clean that up. 30th allowed in pass yards per game. So got to win on both sides of the ball. They're playing great on offense, putting up some points. Could see them winning the NFC South. The entire NFC, I don't know. That would be a long shot. But, hey, anything could happen, right? David Fuentes 7590 says, As soon as Drake May is inserted into the Patriots lineup, even with that god-awful O-line, the offense will look a million times better. I agree, and let's be honest, it really couldn't get much worse. Pats are dead last in the league in yards per game, and they are 31st in the league in points per game. Now, we've only seen Drake May a little bit in relief work in week three, and that is by design. You know, I really think the Pats are trying to keep him on the sideline, observing the game, soaking it all in for as long as possible because they really believe that he can be their quarterback of the future. And, you know, they don't really have too many weapons, though. I like Ramondre Stevenson, but I feel like they got to go out. In addition to the offensive line, yes, they got to go get a receiver, man, whether that be in free agency, whether that be in the draft. But there's just not a lot of weapons to work with. And when you combine that with not having a lot of time to throw, 
And you got a guy like Jacoby Brissett. Let's be honest, Jacoby Brissett is a well-traveled seasoned veteran, but he's not going to will you to a game. Like Jacoby Brissett can play good if there are good pieces around him. Right now, the Pats don't have good pieces around him. He's not getting any time to throw. So curious to see if and when Gerard Mayo decides to make that switch to Drake May. See if that sparks the team a little bit. I believe that it could. Uh, but yeah, it really can't get much worse for the Pats right now. Honey Badger on YT says the Texans win the Super Bowl with my main man, CJ Stroud. Again, another bold prediction. Uh, well, I do think the Texans are good. And I, I also think that they have the pieces, you know, to get there and they have the long term pieces that they need to be successful in the future. I don't know if that time is now. I mean, they are fourth in the league in passing yards and they also are fifth in the league in yards allowed. So they're playing good on both sides of the ball. The thing about the AFC, though, is you have to make it past the Chiefs and or the Bills, which let's be honest, the Chiefs. I mean, who's not going to bet on them at the end of the day? Josh Allen and the Bills, I still I still think are the front runner as of right now. At least that's just my opinion. Um, I think CJ Stroud is him, you know, and I think their receiving core is elite. They added Daniil Hunter. They got Will Anderson Jr. on defense. But again, I just, I don't know how you bet against KC or the Bills. I, I'm a huge Stroud and a huge Texans fan. So I would actually love to see that. Uh, we'll see. Still a lot of football left to go. Uh, but that would be, that would be quite the accomplishment for the Texans. Cameron Moo 8 says, Vikes will win the North and get the two seed in this year's playoffs. So actually my hot take, if you guys want to know, I think that someone from the NFC North will represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. Now, whether that's, the Vikings, the Lions, the Packers, not going to be the Bears, okay? Huh? Don't count the Packers out, though, man. They, I know they're tuned too, but, you know, don't count them out. They got something going on there. Um, but whether that be the Vikings, Packers, whatever, uh, Vikings are great. I mean, I, we just, I talked about them just, just you know, a couple uh, hot takes ago. They have to sustain it. You still got the Lions. They're hot on their heels. Lions are 3-1. and one. Vikings are 4-0. and oh. I would say if the Vikings beat the Lions when they have their head-to-head -head matchup, then I could definitely see them being somewhere between the one through the three seed. So not saying that couldn't happen. And again, all, you know, the what we've seen so far looking like they're the real deal. They just got to sustain it because it's a long season and we're only going into week five. Uh, so Kraton, Kraton the Dark One says Chiefs will win the Super Bowl. Again, how do you bet against them? Uh, they've won... The last two Super Bowls, they've won three out of the last five. Um, every time people bet against them, Andy Reid says, hold my beer. Like, and they just get stuff done. It doesn't matter who leaves their team. It doesn't matter who's banged up, who's injured. They just always find a way to get it done. So you have to figure that they're going to be in that position again. Um, I love Xavier Worthy, fastest guy in the combine, I believe, uh, in history, if I'm not mistaken, in the 40-yard dash. Uh, they did lose Rasheed Rice for seemingly the entire year. They were going to lose him next year anyways, but he was, you know, supposed to be there all this year. They're saying that maybe he'll come back, but it's a long shot at best. Um, you know, defense is kind of middle in the pack in terms of yards. They only allow 18 points per game, which is great. But yeah, I mean, until history proves otherwise, like how do you bet against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs? Silas Vaden says Jaden Daniels leads the commanders to the playoffs and beats a team that they should not. Kind of like CJ Stroud last year. Yeah, don't remind me. They beat the Browns and, you know, I'm a closet Browns fan who came out of the closet a long time ago. So, okay. So I remember that. But I 100% agree with you, Silas. I do think the commanders will make the playoffs. I would, I think that they'll make it as a wild card. Um, Jaden Daniels is playing some good football. You know, they say people are joking, saying he's playing college ball in the NFL. Well, guess what? They're three and one. So whatever type of ball he's playing, it's certainly working. Um, and I, but you know, I could also see them being one and done in the playoffs. I think, uh, early on, you know, offensive rookie of the year, Jaden Daniels is right there. I think he possibly Malik neighbors have been uh, kind of the two best rookies. But I do think that the Commanders will make the playoffs. Whether or not they beat a team or not, that remains to be seen. But uh, definitely a good start to the season so far for them. At Ghostly6210 says, My Ravens may have got short, but with King Henry, we can do it. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Living in Ohio, the AFC North, I've seen the Ravens play more times than I would like to count. 
and you can never count them out. I don't think there's a question that they will make the playoffs. Like I think, you know, they're they're two and two right now, haven't played the best football, but I think they'll figure it out and make the playoffs. The question is, can they finally make it to the promised land? Can they finally make it to that illustrious Super Bowl? Lamar Jackson, two times, two times MVP. It's time to will your team there. Yes, they have King Henry now. They have Flowers. They have Andrews. The run defense is elite. Number one run defense in the league. Pass defense, not so great. But ultimately, I think it's going to come down to Lamar Jackson. Can he play playoff football the same way that he plays regular season football? I think that is the question. It's not Oreo says Texans shock the world and beat the Chiefs in the playoffs. I hope so, man, uh, because I'm really sick of seeing the Chiefs win. I got to be honest, but, you know, I, we talked about it above already. And, you know, I, I hope and pray that that comes true. If I had to put my hard earned quiche on it, I just don't know how you bet against KC or the Bills, you know, if it comes down to it. Um, Texans are great. You know, their offense is great. Like I said, above, they got the weapons. And I do think in time that they will be in that conversation. I just don't know if it's right now. I hope it is. I really hope it is. I'm I'm pulling for them, you know, in the AFC because it looks like my Browns aren't going to be getting there anytime soon. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, I don't know. A lot of ball left to play and Stroud's playing good and the Texans playing good. So we'll have to see how it goes. Daniel 330 says Jaden Daniels wins offensive rookie of the year. Yeah. Talked about that above, too. I think right now, you know, again, we're early on here. We're in week five. I think right now, kind of like the big three for offensive rookie of the year would be Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, and Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, Caleb Williams, though, don't count him out. Like, I'm not really a Caleb Williams fan, um, and you guys know how I feel about Bears, right? But we're still early on the season. Caleb Williams has some weapons. Week three, he put up, I think, 360-something yards, 363, I believe. So if he can do that in other games like <laughs> that'll propel him into that conversation much much quicker but yeah i think right now daniels has been uh the better qb and if he keeps playing the way he's played probably needs to play just a little bit better i think that he definitely could win the offensive rookie of the year and then finally a rams fan here says caleb <laughs> i was just talking about caleb williams caleb williams is a bust since that's not a prediction here's one puka will still have a thousand yard seasons a season for the Rams, who will also win the NFC West. Uh, yeah, like I said, as far as the first part, Caleb Williams, I mean, I think it's too early to say he's a bust. Like, let's be real. In my opinion, it's too early to say Bryce Young is a bust. I know he's played terribly, but year one for Bryce Young, absolute wash. Year two, I think his confidence was just completely demoralized. So if it's too early for to say that Bryce is a bust, it's definitely too early to say that Caleb is a bust. As far as uh, Puka having a thousand yards, um, you know, and the Rams winning the NFC West, they're saying Puka could be out till like week nine. So if that's the case, that doesn't leave, you know, a whole lot of time to get there. Matt Stafford's a gunslinger, of course, and Puka's great. So if there's any, I guess, duo that could do it, it would be them, um, you know. And as far as the Rams winning the NFC West, Rams are banged up, man. It's unfortunate. It's a, you know, it is a part of football. But they're just banged up. I think, you know, were they completely healthy, they would have a shot of winning the NFC West. But with San Fran there, I know they've also kind of got off to a little bit of a slow start. But it's San Francisco. They're going to figure it out. And the way that Seattle has been playing, I think, you know, it would take some kind of turnaround for them to win the NFC West. And Rams fan, we got ourselves a little rivalry this Sunday because the Packers taking on your Rams and, uh, you know, may the best team win. But Hey, some good, good predictions here, guys. Um, if you want to hear my bold prediction of this NFL season, I believe that it will be the Buffalo Bills versus one of the teams in the NFC North, either the Lions, probably the Lions or the Vikings, as much as I would love it to be the Packers. I don't know. Like I said, Jordan Love, first game coming back from injury. I know he had three picks, but he had like almost 400 yards. They have weapons. But my bold prediction is the Buffalo Bills will represent the the uh, AFC in the Super Bowl, and they will be going up against one of the teams in the NFC North. So thank you guys all for your predictions. Love it. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, let's go spin this wheel 
and see who gets to win themselves an NFL jersey. 13 subscribers on the Wheel of Truth. Let's give this bad boy a spin and see who is going to be the lucky winner of an NFL jersey. Again, thank you guys so, so much for 1,000 subscribers. You guys rock, and this is all because of you. So the winner of an NFL jersey is going to be Mr. It's Not Oreo. So shout out to It's Not Oreo, also a member of the SFL SFL video dropping next after this one. Thank you guys for your patience. Uh, had to celebrate you guys for the 1,000 subscribers. But congrats to It's Not Oreo. It's Not Oreo, please reach out to me. You can reach out to me at email, Facebook, Instagram. All my socials are down there in the description. Some of them are on the banner, too, of my uh, YouTube homepage. But reach out to me or I'll reach out to you even, or I guess you reach out to me. I don't think I have your information. But let me know how, you know, like what jersey you want, what size, what team, what player, what color, all that good stuff, and also where I should send it to. And I will make sure I get that sent out post haste. So fun video, guys. And hey, you know, if you guys want me to do more, you know, mostly I just do Madden stuff and that's kind of my niche, but I love talking football. So if you guys enjoyed hearing my analysis of, of the bold predictions today and you want to see me do more stuff like this, I would be more than happy to do that. So let me know. But shout out to you guys. That's going to do it for me tonight. I will catch you on the next video, which will be an SFL episode. Until then. Peace.